morning. Today we are heading to Monticello. We are in Virginia at the Lake Anna State Park and I cannot wait to go see Jefferson's house. We're on our way on these very narrow and beautiful country roads. It's absolutely stunning here. You can take a tour bus, but we are going to take the six tenths of a mile hike up through the grounds because you actually pass Jefferson's burial site going this way. Thomas Jefferson was the third president of the United States. He actually wanted to be the second president of the United States, but he lost to John Adams. He hated Aaron Burr, but Aaron Burr was his vice president. And really he only won because Alexander Hamilton persuaded people to vote in his favor. It was a deadlock for days and days and days during the election. And it was really by a very, very small margin that he became the third president, or it would have been Aaron Burr. What a thought. Tell me how you're feeling. A little overwhelmed, to be honest. It's uh, unbelievable to think that we're here where Thomas Jefferson lays to rest with Martha and his daughters. And Thomas Jefferson was not a perfect person by any stretch of the imagination. He was one of the original founding fathers, that he was the author of the Declaration of Independence, and that he did do some incredible things. Behind us here and to my left were the coal sheds. Coal sheds were incredibly important and it's where they st stored charcoal. Charcoal was then moved to either the main house, the kitchens or Mulberry Row where Jefferson was famous for making nails. He was also meticulous in his bookkeeping and his calculating. He calculated that 666 bushels would make 172,464 nails. He was a very accurate man. Mulberry Row was the heart of production and manufacturing at Monticello. Jefferson's plans called for brick buildings along Mulberry Row, but the majority of them remained temporary wooden shacks. We know this because of the archaeological digs that have been done here and also, again, Jefferson's meticulous note-keeping. Right here is actually an active archaeological dig. They're looking for Jefferson's one in 10 road. He called it one in 10 because it went up 10 feet for every one mile of distance. This was actually a very important road. The slaves used it to carry water from uh, the stream to Mulberry Road. They haven't yet located the road, but they're hoping to locate it soon. Here we have the joiner's shop. This chimney and the foundations are all that remains of the joiner's shop. One of the first structures on Mulberry Row. It dates from about 1775. Now because skilled workers were so hard to find back in the early 1800s, they actually employed free workers here, which was very rare because of course he did have a lot of slaves. Um, but about seven of his slaves were uh, recorded as being joiners and craftsmen. We are coming up on the nickel side of the building, which is right here to our left, but we're going to circle around the back side first and all the way around to the front. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button so YouTube knows. Look at these beautiful mulberry trees that line this whole pathway. Yeah. What we're walking on right now is actually Mulberry Row, and this is where all of the workstations were. Right here is what was with the old nailery. This is one of the most important areas because this is how Jefferson made money. He sold nails. They worked on a lot of debt, and he had a lot of crops go wrong, just like Washington did. Um, in the tobacco industry, it was just not very good. And then after the Revolutionary War, he was pretty much broke.
the bellows blacksmith, they did an archaeological dig here and they did actually find remnants of an old forge. So they know that that's what was here. And of course, again, he did keep meticulous records. And then there are instructions here on how to make a tin cup. It always amazes me when you see these huge old trees. Did he plant these trees? Was he here when they were here? Did he sit and read underneath them? Did maybe he and Martha sit and picnic under here at the back of the house with the beautiful views? We have a walking tour that starts in about an hour. So we're going to go up to the front here and we're going to walk around the side here to the right. What do you see? I see the front of Monticello and I literally see Jefferson riding up on his horse. He was a great horseman and often rode with his daughter um, with him in the saddle. After his wife Martha died, he would ride for hours and hours in just such abject grief. It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. Let's go walk around the grounds. Come on. Yeah. After Jefferson died in 1826, his heirs had to actually sell all of Monticello, all of his land and, unfortunately, his slaves. And it was purchased by Uriah Phillips Levy, who was a naval officer. When Uriah Phillips Levy died in 1862, he attempted to bequeath the entire estate to the United States government, and they refused it. Yes, and if it wasn't for the Levy family and their 90 years of preservation of Monticello, we wouldn't have it today. This color is the original paint color that would have been here during Jefferson's time. It's called chrome yellow, and it was quite a poisonous uh, substance that created this color. That was incredible. It's actually an awful lot smaller than I was expecting. It isn't that odd. And they portray his bedchamber where he passed away as this kind of dark and dreary place. And it really wasn't. Now, that's not to say that they haven't changed the furnishings and the bed covers and so on. So it looks a lot brighter than maybe it did when, um, when he was there and he passed away. This here is an ice house. Look at the size of it, it's huge. Eh?
We found the North Privy and the ice Storage. store. Yeah. And now we're underneath. And it's nice and cool down here, actually. The beer cellar. It was actually Jefferson's wife who oversaw the brewing of beer. She recorded in her account book the brewing of 15 gallons casks of small beer about every two weeks. Dumbwaiters were not a modern invention. They had been around in Europe for many, many years, but Jefferson actually designed this himself. And in the photographs that you can see from the dining room, this goes directly up and they can deliver his wine. Leaving the cellar. And this is the last thing, except for the outside, we have the Sally right. Hemmings exhibit. Right, and that's in the kitchens and the dairy and so on, isn't it? Yes, on the part of the basement down here. I'm going to go uh, find out what they say about Sally. After his time in serving in France, uh, Jefferson was actually obsessed with French cooking and had a lot of pots and pans and so on brought back from France. And actually, Sally Hemings brother was uh, taken with him when he went to France along with Sally and he was the one that was trained as a French cook. This is actually Monticello's first kitchen. The one we saw earlier was the second kitchen to be built here, but this then became the slave kitchen. I'm really not sure what could top this day. It's just incredible. It's incredible to be here. It's incredible to be where he walked. But also, again, remembering that uh, not everything about him was good and not everything about this situation was good. We hope you've enjoyed this tour of Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's home. Join us next week as we head to Washington, D.C. Until then, we'll see you on the trail.